Well, good morning, Wake Up Shake Up. It's the Diane in the Morning Show, live from Diane Hockman's sniffly bed here on the Home Business Radio Network. What is she talking about? Guys, I have had the sniffles all week. I don't know whether it was running around with Thanksgiving and all the family or the little cousins with all their germs or whatever, but I have had the sniffles and the cold that doesn't want to go away. You ever know that feeling where you don't really feel that bad, but you feel bad, if you know what I'm saying? It's been a week like that. During the day, I do pretty good. By the uh, by, the time the uh, the sun goes down, it's that bewitching hour of, Ugh, I just want to go to bed. So, um, you know, I've been doing the best I can to keep up around here. Um, but it's all good, you know, because it could be a lot worse. Um, uh, I could have the typhoid or something, but instead I just have the sniffles. So, uh, And I know you've had the sniffles too. So I figured, what the heck, I'd share it with you and why, uh, why keep it quiet. So first of all, guys, I hope you're enjoying all the positive powered radio here on the network. And I truly hope you're enjoying all the Christmas and holiday music. What a lot of fun. You know, this is our first holiday season here at the network. And to have all the, um, you know, they asked me to record my favorite holiday memory, which I thought was super cool. And, um, you know, we have a lot of people coming out of the woodwork to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and uh, or a happy holiday season, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, whatever it is that you celebrate, I want to wish you a happy one. And it's just a lot of fun to have the whole profession coming together um, and just to celebrate this festive time of year. And, you know, we've been talking a lot about ways to bump your business during the holidays, which has been very exciting. <clears throat> There's all kinds of strategies and techniques that you can use during the holidays to set yourself up for a really big new year. And, um, you know, I want you guys to keep yourself even keel. I have a great topic to discuss with you today. But the biggest deal during the holiday is to keep yourself even keel. And I'm living proof. I mean, I went out and I guess I overdid it. I had a lot of travel and different things going on. And now I got the sniffles. And when you get the sniffles and you got presents to wrap and you got kids to take care of and you got all this other stuff going on and obviously a business to run, it tends to um, get a little hard. And sometimes you have to let certain things go. And what you don't want to do is let your business be what you let go of this time of year because this time of year is just absolutely crucial because we all know there's a window at the end of the month when everybody's making New Year's resolutions and everybody's resolutions are about making more money, getting out of debt, losing weight, getting healthy, all the stuff that we sell. So we definitely want to be set up to be the ones selling it. So, all right, you guys know me. If you're an avid listener of the show, um, you know me. I'm a little fresh. I just say it like it is. If you're new to this show, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about a topic today that's, you know, it'll sound a little in your face. And, and you know, that's okay because I think sometimes we need someone um, to get in our face a little bit about our business and just say some, some kooky common sense things that make us scratch our heads and go, you know, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? So before I get into the topic, what I want to do is ask all of you guys, which I always do, Please, 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 please. I'm like a little kid. Mommy, please. Can I have ice cream, please? Um, guys, I'm looking for you to send me out, as you always do, and I appreciate all of you, a tweet uh, on Twitter, slash uh, twitter.com forward slash Diane Hockman, or if you know how to use Twitter, it's at Diane Hockman. Send me out a tweet. Give me your news, your stories, your ideas, uh, thoughts, criticisms, if you have them, uh, topics you'd like me to discuss. Um, those of you, if you wanted to come on the show, if you're somebody who has a fair amount of success in the profession and want to come share some tips and ideas, um, shoot me a, um, a tweet and I'll send you back my email or you can just email me at diane at dianehockman.com. Pitch me on an idea if it's interesting. I try to keep my show, um, you know, we have a lot of interviews on the network. They're awesome. The Leaders Lunch and Doug uh, Firebaugh does and there's a lot of other interviews. So I like doing interviews, but I more like talking. Um, and chatting and having conversations kind of over a cup of coffee. Uh, if you're really nice, I'll let you come over and be sniffly in bed with me. <laughs> that sounds so funny. Um, but I try to keep it um, really interesting and maybe even a little edgy. So if you have something edgy you want to talk about, something interesting, you're using a neat technique, I'm specifically and always interested in um, what I call bridge techniques, the bridge between traditional 
traditional marketing, network marketing, traditional direct sales, and then some of the newfangled stuff, internet, social media, etc. If you found a way, a hybrid to combine them, I'm particularly interested in talking to you and having some fun with you. So tweet me, say hi, say, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, all that good stuff, whatever you guys are celebrating, I'd like uh, to hear from you. So <laughs> I, I, I said to myself, should I uh, do this topic, but I'm going to do it. The topic is annoying versus attractive. Okay. What does that mean? Okay. Um, studies show, we've, we've all heard the statistics, studies show that most people need to be exposed to our business or our product at least seven times, sometimes more, to even get them to take a look, to get them into a presentation, to get them coming down the road. So, the question is, if we use annoying business practices versus attractive business practices, what are the chances that we're ever going to get past the second or third exposure? Now, for those of you that are newer to the profession, this is what I mean, because a lot of people are like, what do you mean I have to talk to someone seven times? I didn't say talk to, I said expose. Okay, And think about it, when you watch a commercial, you have to see a commercial a bunch of times before that product is even on your radar, before that particular car is on your radio, before that particular sandwich bag, whatever it is they're marketing to you. Guys, the definition of marketing, uh, as taught to me by a mentor, I don't know what it says in, uh, you know, in, in, in Merriam-Webster or whatever, the definition of marketing is preparing somebody to buy. It's not selling. Selling is the actual transaction. Okay. When you go in the store, why do they make displays? When you go to the mall, why do they have displays and mannequins and, and all that type of stuff? Why do they make the displays? Why do not just stand there and take your credit card? Because the display prepares you to buy. Why do they have sales? Because feeling that you're getting a discount prepares you to buy. By seeing all these different things, why do they actually decorate? Like if you go to the mall this time of year, they're decorated for the holidays. Why do they do that? Do they decorate for Valentine's Day in springtime? And why do they do that? Because the environment relaxes you and prepares you to buy. And I want you to think about your favorite stores and or places you hang out and the environments that you are most likely to buy in. Let's take um, a donut shop versus a Starbucks. And this was revolutionary not so long ago. Now it's pretty commonplace. There's a Starbucks on every corner. But Starbucks was so weird because coffee shops were little kind of dank uh, places you ran in. You ordered a light and sweet. Uh, before there was rules against smoking, there was usually a lot of people sitting in there smoking. I remember I used to go to Dunkin' Donuts um, years ago, and I used to run in and run out because so many people would be sitting in there smoking before it was against the law. And there, you didn't sit and enjoy. You'd, it wouldn't even occur to you to sit and bring a book and to relax in most coffee shops. And then Starbucks came out, and they created a new environment. And in that new environment, there were plush chairs and couches and <clears throat> tables to bring your computer and, and, and set up so that you could sit and hang out with your friends. And what they did was a created an environment for you to spend money in. What? They created an environment for you to spend money in. Think about it. You were paying twice as much for your coffee at Starbucks and you were elsewhere. Why were you willing to do that? Because of the environment. It was very pretty. It was comfortable. They were playing jazz music or interesting music. Um, you know, at the other places you were lucky if you had the radio on. So it was a very attractive environment. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. And that attractive environment made you more comfortable. And I'm going to give you a term in a minute that you'll... Again, you'll either be delighted. If you're, if you're a marketer at heart, if you're just discovering this and you're a marketer, some of the stuff I say, it's going to be like, oh my God, that's so smart. That's so brilliant. And some of you, if you're not a marketer yet and you're working your way into it, you'll hear a term that I use and you'll be like, whoa, that sounds a little, you know, weird. Well, that's okay. You're coming. You're coming. So they created an attractive environment. They jacked the prices. 
Gave you a premium product, though. They didn't just give you the same product, you know, for double the price. Gave you a premium product and created an environment where they merchandised and gave you lots of things to buy. Back in the day, a coffee shop had coffee and donuts or whatever, a muffin. You know, they didn't have cake cups for your, uh, for your, coffee maker at home and they didn't have coffee you could buy and they didn't have coffee pots and this and that and the next thing. Uh, now you go in there, there's Christmas ornaments, there's CDs, there's whatever. Attractive versus annoying environment. Now, we didn't necessarily perceive the first environment as annoying until somebody came along and created a better environment. And this is a lot of what has happened over the years in direct sales and, um, you know, network marketing. For many years, it was okay. It was acceptable to do, to have certain practices, um, like approaching lots of people. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm not criticizing. I'm just, I'm just trying to make a contrast here. Between And when I use the word annoying, some people may get offended by it, but maybe it's aggressive versus attractive, going towards versus them coming towards you. Um, so I want you guys to relax. I'm not saying stop anything you're doing. What biggest rule in this industry, okay? Um, and I talk to people all the time, and they get very excited about new methodologies that they hear about. And believe me, there's a lot of exciting methodologies out there. But here's something that you must learn, and you must learn now. You must not... Swing the pendulum. I'm off on a sidebar for a minute and I'll come back to Starbucks and all that stuff in a second. You must not swing the pendulum too hard. What that means is if you have some methods that are working, let's say you're doing house parties, uh, flyers, and local classified ads, okay? And you want to get into the internet or get into social media and so on. What you don't want to do is drop everything you have that's working, and swing the pendulum all the way over to the other side to work on something that is unknown to you. Major mistake. And it's a really big mistake if you teach your team to do that without having tested everything and without learning the processes. What you do is you literally stop volume in its tracks by swinging the pendulum, getting everybody excited over something that you're not sure has legs. Okay? So when I mention different processes... I will never see here because here's the thing hitting the ground I built my business when I had no money I built my business when the internet wasn't what it is today okay and for me getting out and doing flyers was what I knew how to do and what I could do and I could do it consistently and I got business from it and it's better to get out a lot of flyers every day and do the do than sit in your office at night trying to figure out how to build a blog and get no traction, no exposure for your product line, no exposure for your business. Okay, if you guys follow that, I don't care how high tech something is, if it doesn't get you where you need to go, if it's not a vehicle for you right now, you never want to stop what you're doing that may seem simpler or basic. Okay, big advice from me. Okay, always have a couple things that you're working, always be mastering a couple things and do not swing the pendulum. So let's come back. I have to put these disclaimers in because what happened, I remember when I was coming up in the business, we used to go to these different um, success seminars and stuff, and every month somebody would show how they were doing it. And everybody does, you know, business a little different. And everybody would get really excited and jacked up. But then what they would do is they would swing the pendulum. They'd stop doing what they had working or the basics, the fundamentals, and they'd go and do some new technique. And another month would go by and the people would make progress. And they kept hopping from process to process to process. I don't want that to happen to you. I want to I want to get you thinking. This show is all about thinking like a business person. This show is all about expanding your marketing mind, okay? I do this show in the morning to wake you up and shake you up as I say and I say it joking, but I'm not kidding. I want to take you by the shoulders and give you that common sense. Common sense says that one sale today is better than none tomorrow. And what I mean by that is when we have the ability to make a transaction today, it's better than the promise of 20 next week. And we tend to chase the promise of 20 next week and miss out on making the one today. One transaction leads to two, leads to 10, leads to 20, leads to thousands throughout your team. So really stable, slow and steady, stable. 
So, Starbucks created an attractive environment, and they outdid their competitors by creating <clears throat> something that was very attractive, okay? Now, when we look at marketing practices, some marketing practices are designed at, see, people hear seven exposures, and it's like, how quick and how hard can I get those exposures with people is what they think, and all you have to do is go on Facebook today. I find it fascinating. For some reason, Facebook the other day added me to a bunch of uh, groups, all marketing groups. I didn't ask to be in them. All of a sudden, <coughs> I'm in 27 different groups. And guys, excuse my sniffles and things. Uh, I'm doing the best I can. So, and I'm seeing, and, 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 and again, no offense to anybody, but I'm watching the same people. And what they're doing is running around from group to 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 group. To group. Did I mention from group to group? And they're plastering the same offers all over the place. It's like littering your town, except it's littering Facebook. And the practice is not attractive because what they're forgetting is every people want to feel special. They want to feel like they discovered something. They want to feel important. And everybody can see them going from group to group to group to group to group to group to group. To group. And it's just like that commercial that's on TV. You ever watch one of those back channels, one of those cable channels? It's the same commercial over and over and over. So you get to the point where the commercial break comes and you're like, ah! Sometimes they're even playing the same commercial like three times back to back because they have no other commercial, commercial revenue. And you're sitting there and your eyes are rolling and every time it comes on, it's like, how many times do I got to play this commercial? Well, that's the annoying marketing practices that people are using. It would be the same as going to the same 10 stores every day and pitching them again. You know, a lot of people will locally stop in businesses, pitching them again and again and again. So I've built my business for a long time now on attractive marketing practices, which are designed to draw people towards you, and they're also designed to get people on board to want to help you. Um, if if you don't know this line from me, <clears throat> and I don't know where I got it from. I think I made it up, but I might not have. And if I didn't, I'm sorry. Um, but people will do more to help you than they'll do to help themselves. I'm sure that's a derivation of something I learned from someone. People will do more to help you than they will to help themselves. So, for example, if you ask some people, Hey, I'm having a big open house for my business. Do you know anyone who's interested in X, Y, Z that you could give these invitations to? Whatever it is, weight loss, blah, blah, blah. Do you know anyone that's interested in X, Y, Z that you could take a couple invitations and hand them to? I'd really appreciate your referrals. <clears throat> what happens is you ask somebody to do that and you triggered their helper gene. Okay, I talk about nosy genes and helper genes, okay? When you trigger their helper gene, what happens is if they're interested themselves, they're going to ask if they can come. And now you've gotten your outcome. If you just ask the guy, would you like to come to my open house about X, Y, Z? The guy can say yes. The guy can say no. Or the guy can feign excuse to have something else to do because he doesn't want to say no, but he feels weird and it creates an awkwardness, okay? I don't like marketing that creates awkward situations, because when you create that awkwardness, there's a negative charge to the feeling that they're having. And each time you go back to them, if there's a negative charge to the feeling they're having, I'm not saying you're negative or creating something negative. It's just that there's that awkwardness. You ever been asked out, ladies? Ever been asked out on a date by a guy that you don't want to go out with, but you don't want to hurt his feelings? You know what I'm talking about. So there's this negative charge. If he were to come back again next Friday and ask you again, you start to relate this negative charge to him talking to you. You guys get that? If you're putting people in positions that they don't want to be in, that negative charge gets embedded in their subconscious, and now they relate this negative feeling to you. So now you've shut down your chances to be able to expose them enough times to eventually get them to take a look. Where if you ask someone for help, there is no negative charge because you've given them what I call the escape hatch. Okay? If you say, hey, would you do me a big favor? And you know my business is X, Y, Z. I'm having a big open house on Saturday. Can I give you a couple of these invitations in case you know anyone that's interested in X, Y, Z? Uh, it would really help me out. I'd really appreciate your referrals. Okay? The guy can go, sure, let me have them, no problem. Okay, he can throw them in the garbage for all he cares. He doesn't, <clears throat> you know, you won't know and 
he can do whatever, but he gets to say yes, and there's a positive feeling as opposed to a negative charge there. Now, if the guy looks at the invitation he's interested, he can ask, hey, is it okay if me and my wife stop by? My wife suffers from X, Y, Z. Sure, absolutely, we'd love to have you. And if the guy does know someone, you're ticking in his mind all week every time somebody complains about how much they ate for Thanksgiving and they have to lose weight or whatever you're selling, and he's actually handing them out. You've now enlisted him, you've enrolled him, you've enlisted him on your side, but you have not annoyed or solicited him. Do you see how powerful this technique is? Annoying versus attractive, okay? If I go on Facebook, let's go for news school, I can write some cool article and I could share it with people. <coughs> Excuse me for a second, guys. And I can, um, if you know Facebook, you know what I mean. I can tag some people and say, hey, just put this article out. I'd love your opinion. And now I can tag some people and get them to talk about my article. <clears throat> I didn't stick it on their wall. I didn't get into their groups and bug them. I'm just adding to the conversation, saying something interesting. Well, when they comment, what starts to happen is all of their contacts see them commenting. And that means that their contacts are likely to take a look at what you wrote. And, of course, at the bottom of your article or whatever you wrote, there's a link to go take a look at what you're talking about. So if we don't solicit, if we are not annoying, if we are attractive and make comfortable environments, think Starbucks. That's all I want you guys to think about. I want my business to be like Starbucks. I want it to be so comfortable people will hang out and have a cup of coffee. I want people to be comfortable in my environment so I can be around them more and more and more. I do not want people to have a negative charge surrounding me. I do not want them to feel solicited. I want them to feel at home. Starbucks. My business is like a Starbucks. Think about other places. We've seen this transition over the last 30 years, you know, depending on how old you are. Guys, do you remember we used to have shoe stores where they'd come out and they'd, you'd have to tell them what you wanted to try on and they'd bring the shoes out and they'd put them on your foot and then they'd stand there and stare at you to see what you wanted. I don't know if you remember that when you were a kid. It still exists in some places. Notice how so many of the shoe stores now are these big warehouses where you can try on whatever you want whenever you want because they know that the more comfortable you are and the more shoes you try on, the more likely you are to buy a pair. So they've removed the barrier of the awkwardness of having to turn down a salesperson and giving you, and guys, this is, this is the thought process behind Walmart, Target, Costco, BJ's, all the big box stores. Think about it. As you walk around, you're literally selling yourself because you're comfortable in the environment. You're able to touch things, look at things, pick up things, blah, 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 blah. And in some of these stores, have you ever been in an Ikea? If you haven't been to an Ikea, I-K-E-A, we don't have them all over different parts. of there. It's worldwide, but we don't have them everywhere in the States. It is literally worth a road trip to go to an Ikea and, and witness the masterful marketing of Ikea. Uh, they have a restaurant, they have ice cream, they have meatballs, they have, you know, kids play place. They have comfortable places for you to sit throughout the store. The store is designed, it's like an amusement park of shopping. You literally can't go in and out of Ikea for a little bit. Ikea is there, like, it's like a day trip. And you can't go there and not spend money. And my kids love Ikea, and I have to admit I do a little bit too, because they set up these different rooms to display their furniture. And you literally can go in these rooms and pretend they're yours, and it's kind of like playing house for adults. It's so comfortable that you can't help but want that couch or want that entertainment center. You can't help but want to buy stuff. And then if you're not in the market for big ticket... If you're not in the market for couches and entertainment centers and beds and all that stuff, you come down to the next floor and the next section, and then they'll sell you every tchotchke under the sun. They'll sell you pillows and drapes and comforters, all very reasonably priced. You cannot leave that store without spending money. It's impossible. And the whole thing is self-serve. Yes, there's help at the counter. The whole thing, it's unheard of. Furniture stores, they usually, it's like they're sharks. They stand at the door waiting for you to come in. Ikea... It's wide open. You can do whatever you want. You can walk around as much as you want. You can spend the whole day there. You can go get coffee and cake and come back and then go back and get lunch and come back. And nobody will bug you. It's masterful marketing. It's like a marketing funnel come to life. You got to go to one. 
So we're coming down to the end of the show. We're coming down to the uh, the point where we, uh, you know, we need to sum this up. And the bottom line is really that if we want people to listen to us, if we want people to respect us, if we want people to engage with us, if we want people to help with us, if we want people to be on board with us, it is imperative that we are attractive and not annoying. So this week, I want you to take an inventory and see, am I being annoyed? And I get brutally real, guys. The key to your business, the key to what you want is getting brutally real, okay? You can't be desperate. You have to have a strategic... Can you imagine Donald Trump running around being desperate, begging people, can I buy your property, you know? Can you imagine Bill Gates getting desperate? You're the CEO of your company. You're in charge of your place, You can't be desperate. You have to be on task. You have to have a solid sequential plan. And you have to think, if I need to expose someone seven times, what's the coolest ways under the sun that I can do it? How can I keep everybody in my environment without annoying people? How can I become the Starbucks of my profession, of my company, of my program. How can I have everybody hanging out with me, checking out my products and checking out my program? You know, if you ask yourself these questions, it's not that hard to figure out. In fact, uh, I know one particular group at a big health and wellness company. They've created like uh, clubs where people come out and drink shakes every day. It's like a coffee shop. It works. It works. So, guys, this... um. You know, this radio show is a little hardcore, it's a little fun, it's a little thought-provoking, uh, but most of all, it's filled with a lot of love and a lot of sniffles. <laughs> um, hopefully, it hasn't sounded too bad. I, I appreciate your patience with me, but um, and, and you'll, you all can make fun of me. I sound like a, I don't know, I sound like a, I don't know, what kind of animal sounds sniffly? I sound like piglet. Um, in any case, you know, what we want... And what we want to do is get out there in the field, meet people, know people, get those referrals, get that help, get that fun, be with and around people as much as we humanly can, and get those 7 to 13 to 15 exposures. When you do, you'll find that you embed your product or service into the mind of others, and then they tend to ask you about it. And that's what my business is like. People are writing me and calling me every day, asking me about my products and services, because I've embedded myself into their brain and into their hearts. So guys, today it's been the Diane in the Morning Show here on the Home Business Radio Network, where we have positive, powered radio. We'll see you all next time. Take care.